What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, Ice Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's video, which is another Chelsea news video to get you through that last final stretch of the international break before the return of Premier League football. In today's video, we're going to be discussing three stories. One being how Chelsea have had their appeal heard by Cass. What's going to happen? When can they expect a decision? I was going to say a result, but that sounds like they've had some sort of medical test. Decision. I'm going to be telling you about how Williana supposedly snubbed Chelsea's new contract extension up to two years to explore pastures new, which Frank Lampard won't be happy about. But is it ultimately a good thing for Chelsea, even though he's in good form? We'll talk about that. And finally, I'm going to give you a lowdown of the injury lists for Chelsea as we get back into domestic football. But stop, guys, a reminder to you guys to subscribe to Yan Plays. If you want to watch me play FIFA 20 Chelsea career mode, it's hilarious, it's loads of fun, people are enjoying it, you could be enjoying it too. Click the link in the top of the description, come visit Yan Plays and do subscribe. Oh yeah, and please do subscribe to Football Therapy, of course. Right then, let's start with the injury list, because that's important, we need to know where the squad stands as we get back into domestic football. Firstly, Christian Pulisic, who has been a huge player for Chelsea of late, Looks like he may well miss the clash against Manchester City on the opening weekend of the Premier League's return. Pulisic endured a bit of a hip injury which prevented him from joining the US national men's team to play football for his homeboys. And he stayed back in the UK to try and do some rehab but it does look like it may have been worse than originally thought and even if it isn't a long term injury it may prevent him from playing against City therefore someone like Hudson Odoi will get his chance to shine. We will of course talk more about that game in the official match preview here on Football Therapy. Next up Tony Rudiger, apparently Chelsea's most talented and experienced centre half had another operation as we know and he's going to be out for a little while longer, a few weeks apparently. This is a peculiar one because obviously him and N'Golo Kante were the most notable absentees early doors this season, apparently being Chelsea's two best players, although Chelsea seemed to cope just fine without them. Rudiger is of course one of Chelsea's best players and there is still a very strong argument to be made that he is Chelsea's best centre half. So it's frustrating that he is still out, especially if you consider the fact how Frank Lampard doesn't really seem to rate Christensen that much. He's just constantly playing to Mori and Zuma and I think he doesn't want to split up that partnership. Which poses the question, what happens when Rudiger actually does come back in? So anyway, Antonio Rudiger's going to be out for a few more weeks and even when he does get fit, he's going to have trouble breaking up that centre-back partnership of Tomori and Zuma. So, watch this space, I will keep you updated. Ross, the boss, Barkley remains a big doubt. Obviously, he too didn't go away on international duty with England due to an ankle injury. Perhaps not the most biggest star in this Chelsea squad. Had an amazing pre-season with Chelsea. Everyone thought he was going to be a huge player for Frank Lampard, being a player that could maybe emulate Frank Lampard in many ways, kind of like how Mason Mount's doing. Turns out he wasn't really that player or he's not going to be that player for Frank Lampard and there's huge speculation that he actually might be on his way out as early as January. I mean, the dude is still a good player and Chelsea bought him for £15 million. He's a full England international in his prime in terms of age and provided he hasn't got an injury, Chelsea will make 30, 35 million on him and make a huge profit. So will he play much for Chelsea again, even when he's not injured? I'm not sure, but still he's out for the next game or two, apparently, if we believe reports. And of course, Ruben Loftus-Cheek will be out for a few more weeks at least with his long-term Achilles injuries, which seem to be way, way worse than Callum hudson Adoys. Ruben Loftus-Cheek was probably one of Chelsea's most important players, if not second most after Eden Hazard in terms of moving forward last season. So he actually would be a huge, huge plus when he returns to the squad, even if that causes a massive selection headache for Chelsea coach Frank Lampard. But he won't have that headache for a little while because Ruben will take a while to return to the squad. So before we talk about Willian, let's talk about the transfer ban appeal. Chelsea have had their appeal heard in Switzerland at the Court of Arbitration of Sport, CAS, and now they will await a decision. Chelsea have always maintained the stance of they have done nothing wrong. Obviously, they had to swallow the first window ban because maybe they didn't have enough time to appeal or they left it a little while. There was a little bit of uncertainty of how they were approaching the whole appeal process, but Chelsea are a smart club. They've got loads of lawyers, loads of money. 
I'm sure they were doing it the best way they can. Chelsea have also swallowed a half a million pound fine, which sucks for them, but probably in the grand scheme of things, it's okay, especially the amount of money they've saved recently in hiring a non-expensive coach like Frank Lampard, not making transfers, and then making money off Eden Hazard of Vara Morata, finishing third in the Premier League, getting that revenue, uh, winning the Europa League, getting that revenue. You know, they're all right for money at the moment. But like I said, they maintain they've done nothing wrong, especially with the signing of all these youngsters. That was the main offence. So they will hear a decision within the next sort of 14 to 21 days on whether the ban will be lifted for this coming winter window. That will leave them knowing what's happening in early December, which would give them loads and loads of ample time to not only open negotiations up with players uh, for the coming window, but just generally sitting down and scouting. It will give them essentially a lot of time to make, if they want, one or two sensible transfers in January, if there is such a thing as a sensible January transfer. I mean, there's been a couple over the years, but they're rare, right? Still, if Frank Lampard really does believe in his project and thinks even this first year, this transitional year, he can do something great, the club might be inclined to give him a load of money to bolster what he has and really make a run at the Champions League, who knows? Watch this space, it's very, very interesting. And like I said, Chelsea, and therefore Chelsea fans, football media and world football, will know the decision in the first half of December. So there's your call of arbitration of sport update with the Chelsea transfer ban appeal stuff. Let's move on. Right, it's been a big story of the last few windows. Willian, often a Chelsea boo boy, this season reborn, an incredibly hard worker, very talented, very good on the ball, and actually an integral player in Frank Lampard's system. Lampard will absolutely like to re-sign Willian to a new contract extension. Two years, fine, no problem. Even if Chelsea would only want to give him 12 months. But it's been reported that Willian has snubbed a new contract to explore his options. Now, we know Barcelona have wanted Willian for a long time, and they still do. Go check out the last Chelsea news video I've done where I talk about how Valverde still wants him. They've offered Chelsea, I think, up to £58 million for him not so long ago, and they're looking now to get him on a free. This would suit Willian for a multitude of reasons. He would get more money if he goes on a free. He'll get a huge signing on bonus. Usually players see out their contracts because they fancy the signing on bonus. And also, he'll finish his time at Chelsea and maybe he'll get a three-year contract away in Spain and play with the GOAT himself, Lionel Messi. When you get in your 30s, you want to explore your options and Barcelona certainly is an incredibly good option for the Brazilian. Saying that though, he loves living in London. I think he loves playing for Chelsea and by all accounts, looking at what's happening and from what he's saying recently, he loves playing for Frank Lampard. If you follow Willian on social media, he's always filming himself driving past Harrods. He loves the London culture, he loves the city. Obviously his family's there. He's raised his two little girls there. He's got a restaurant there. So he will take this decision very, very seriously. But if you're a footballer, your career is very short. And if at the very end, you've got a chance to go to Barcelona against a lot of odds at that age, he's probably thinking, Logic would dictate in terms of a career move that I do this. Probably offer me more money than Chelsea would, a longer contract, win La Liga, play with Messi, just hang out in hot Spain for a while. So it's a difficult decision, but what would it mean if Willie answers, look, I love Chelsea, I love living in London, but guys, I can't turn this down. I'm going to Barcelona. See you in a bit. Frank Lampard will be annoyed because, like I said, Willian's been an integral part of his current team, but ultimately, this might be a positive for Chelsea. It does look like Pedro's on his way out too, and if Willian definitely goes out in the summer, that means Chelsea need a new top, top tier winger, and it could basically bolster the concept of the young, pacey revolution. Willian is playing very, very well now, but he's got to be touching the bell curve at this point. Do you want him to go over the bell curve while he's still an important player and you don't have a top tier replacement? Or do you want to sort of see him out just as he's about to go over said bell curve and you bring in another younger superstar player to just keep your form running high? If you look at it from that perspective, ultimately it will be a good thing, even though he's a super important player for Frank Lampard at the moment. So, classic Jan from Football Therapy, always putting a positive spin on any outcome. And let's be honest, man, with Chelsea at the moment, there's positive spins on everything. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. Let me hear your 
thoughts and opinions on the stories I've spoken of today. Remember to subscribe to Yam Plays and join me for some funny FIFA gaming content. Remember to like this video if you've enjoyed the video. And remember you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on Twitter and Instagram. That's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I let me be.